Hi, my name is Chanel Schwarzengruber, and I'm currently a second year student here at the Ontario Veterinary College. This summer, I worked in the pathobiology department, evaluating the accuracy and reliability of the Famacha eye color chart in sheep using different light sources. Now, a little bit of background information to get you started. Um, Homonchus contortus is a severe gastrointestinal nematode parasite of sheep. Now, though they have several kinds, this one's considered the most pathogenic due to its blood feeding activity. Now, because this parasite feeds on blood, it can cause severe anemia in the animals that it infects. The Famacha chart was developed in South Africa as a tool used to evaluate the severity of the anemia. There are five color categories on this chart, and each color is correlated with specific pack cell volume range. This allows you to compare it directly to the conjunctiva of the sheep, a mucous membrane, and quantify the severity of the anemia. So the categories are labeled one through five. Categories one and two indicate an animal that is not considered anemic, so healthy. Categories three through five indicate an anemic animal. This is a useful health management tool for producers, and it allows them to determine which animals are not handling their homonchus burdens well and require deworming treatment. This is also useful because currently right now, selective deworming treatment is a tool used to slow the progression and development of anhelminthic resistance, so the resistance to common dewormers. This is especially important now here in Ontario, as a recent study has demonstrated that anhelminthic resistance for Haemonchus exists here. Now, the problem we're addressing specifically in this study is the fact that this chart, when developed, was developed entirely in outdoor sunlight conditions. It's been evaluated several times in different countries, however, it's been the same lighting conditions. The issue that presents to us here in Ontario is that due to our weather conditions, sheep tend to be housed indoors in the winter months. This means that for producers to use the Famacha system in their flocks, they'll likely have to use artificial light, and we want to make sure that the Famacha chart is still giving reliable results with different light sources. The objectives of the study are simple enough. The first one is to evaluate whether or not the accuracy of the Famacha chart changes with the light source used. So for this project, I've evaluated four light sources. Outdoor sunlight, as historically, historically been used, ambient indoor barn light, an LED flashlight, and a low lumen flashlight. The second objective of the study is simply to determine whether or not Famacha scoring by different readers is reliable. So we want to make sure that people newly trained to the system are giving the same scores. To do this, we started off with 176 sheep from six different sheep farms and randomly allocated them into four different light source groups. Two different readers who were blinded to each other's scores then independently evaluated each animal, the same animals, with the Famacha score. The scores we got from this we considered the reader score of the animal. Now to compare accuracy, we also took a jugular blood sample of all of these animals at the same time and used that to determine the actual PCV of the animal. This allowed us to determine what Famacha category on the chart the animal should have scored. So for example, if we took blood from an animal and it scored a PCV value of 0.31, the animal should have been scored in a Famacha category of 1, as that constitutes any animal with a PCV value of 0.28 or greater. We then collapsed the scores into anemic versus non-anemic. And this was done because even though the Famacha chart has five different color categories on it, the real important distinction is between animals that are anemic versus non-anemic. That's all producers need to know, as that means treat versus don't treat. So we collapsed the scores into categories of one and two, which is considered healthy and non-anemic, and three to five, which is considered anemic. We then use this information to do a logistic regression with the reader scores and the determined scores that we should have gotten. In the logistic regression table here, you can see that the only light source that had a significant value was the LED light. Now this output table is in odds ratio format, which means that because the values are less than one for LED light, that means that the odds of the readers correctly differentiating anemic versus non-anemic animals was significantly lower for LED light compared to the reference group, which in our case we used barn light. This of course though doesn't tell us which direction the deviation and scoring went. So further statistical analysis with parameter estimates let us determine that both readers significantly more were scoring animals as anemic when in fact they weren't anemic using the LED light. We did not have this issue and there was no other significant results with the natural sunlight nor the flashlight compared to barn light. To evaluate reliability of match scoring, we did a weighted kappa, which gave us a moderate reliability of 0.51. Now, though that's not the best interreader agreement score, you can see that the confidence intervals in gray here overlap starting at the scores of anemic animals. This is important as that means that our score differences were between animals scoring one and two, 
which in real life is irrelevant because neither of these animals would be treated. We were agreeing on animals that were anemic, which is the important part. We think the LED light was causing this like the incorrect scoring with anemia status due to the fact it's a very bright white light and when shined on a mucous membrane tends to wash out the color. This would make the animal appear paler than it is of course and therefore we're scoring them as anemic when in fact they're not. The nice thing with the reliability though is it shows that the LED light effect is robust because it still occurs with both readers even though one significantly categorized animals one category above the other. So that means that the LED light effect is not affected by moderate kappa. The conclusions from the study are simple enough. We do recommend the use of the FAMACHA chart as a health management tool for Ontario producers as the accuracy and validity has been demonstrated several times in recent studies. However, when using the FAMACHA chart here in Ontario, we highly recommend that producers don't use an LED light as barn light, a flashlight or natural light are sufficient sources of light to use. I would just like to thank everyone I was able to work with in the lab this summer as they were a great asset, as well as Bear Animal Health for the Summer Research Scholarship, Elanco Animal Health, NSERC, OMAFRA, and the Ontario Sheep Marketing Agency. Thanks for watching.